Hello and welcome to Exu Photography. My name is Daniel. Uh, a couple of months ago I published a video on how to uh, change the fan of your ZWO camera. Uh, it turns out some of them have uh, vibration issues. Uh, so um, I didn't have any good replacement fan, but I mounted my fan on some uh, silicon standoffs which is pretty much standard in the PC build industry thing. So I had someone laying around and you can watch this video and uh, take a look at how I did it. And, uh, but I prefer A, B tests, see if uh, something did improve. And uh, full disclosure here, uh, I just haven't switched the uh, mounting of the fan. I also changed my secondary mirror to a uh, better one, um, at least on paper. So I have done two modifications uh, since the uh, reference image uh, I will uh, compare to, which you will see here uh, just shortly. We can't really tell if the mirror has done that kind of improvement and the uh, new fan mounting has done that kind of improvement. The reason I haven't done A-B test with the particular um, upgrade is that uh, I haven't been able to photograph for uh, three months here in Sweden. It's been grey weather, um, raining, snowing, made it impossible uh, for me to, to take any pictures. There have been some clear nights, but we are talking about just a couple of hours. So, uh, But I do have one clear night. That night was also the first night uh, and the start of a new project for me. Uh, which is a mosaic project. I haven't done mosaics before, so that's the first for me. But let's dig into um, the images. We're going to take a look at the images, but to really get a good sense of feeling of what the improvements have done is to measure the images. And I'm always using um, subframe selector in PixInsight. It's a great tool to evaluate your images. And so I've done this uh, this time too. So these first eight images, which, which you can see here, is uh, eight luminance images of the NGC 4889 Galaxy cluster. And I also taken the first eight luminance images of my M30, uh, M31 mosaic project. So same amount of um, images, uh, same pixel scale, uh, which is uh, 0.78 arc seconds per pixel. Uh, I have a thousand millimeter focal length right now. We measure those and we get um, this uh, window here, which is the graph window. What's interesting to look at is not the noise value and, and not the amount of stars. These are two uh, completely different kind of images. So we won't compare a galaxy cluster with the M31 galaxy. That's not what we're going to do today. We are going to first take a look at the full width of maximum. Okay, so the first eight images in the stack here is the uh, old images. Uh, which I took before the uh, new mounting of the fan, but also the new secondary mirror. And as we can see here, the first image here, uh, quite good for with half maximum value. We want as low number as possible, and that's the star size, basically, how well focused the star is. As you can see here, it scatters all over the place up and down, and this is the last image of this stack. So a couple of good images and a couple of really bad ones. From picture number nine to 16, we can see here, not the best number, and this is just one image session with M31 also, so I haven't much to compare with. I don't know how the sky was when I uh, was photographing the galaxy cluster. Uh, last spring. But if we take a look here, it's not the best figures, but it's more consistently. What we can learn from this is um, it's not any tops and downs, ups and downs basically, so it's more even. And this is just a couple of tenths of full width of maximum, so um, at the bottom we have 3.1 and we have 4.6 up here, so that's the full width of maximum. Now we're going to look at the eccentricity, and what I will try to explain the eccentricity. That's the 
is how oblong the stars is. So tracking errors and also possibly collimation errors um, if you have a, a mirror telescope a reflector. Uh, we'll show in this. We want as a low number as possible. So let's choose this one. And we'll start with the first A1 here. This is also all over the place. Uh, you want uh, numbers below 0.6. And that is when our human eye can't detect any oblong uh, shapes. So for our eyes, um, below 0.6 is round, as you can see. And here's the biggest improvement. It's all over the place. Um, with the last picture, okay, so this number here, number index 8, is the last image of the first stack from spring, 0.68, and it's all over the place, as you can see. Then we move on to index number 9 to 16, which is the images I photographed just a couple of days. The first one is so-so, but look at the rest. Um, all of them is below 0.6. So this is a, a huge win for me <laughs> and actually see that the measurements is better and more consistent. And uh, let's take a look at the images. So this is a uh, crop from uh, um, the Galaxy Cluster, which I shot uh, last spring. It's a three minute exposure, nothing done with it. This is just straight out of the camera which um, I have a automatic stretch applied to it. So it's a screen, a screen transfer function stretch. As you can see, the stars is okay, but some of them have uh, some kind of funny shape. Um, you can see it in more stars. Perhaps that is um, the old secondary mirror. Don't know. And let's take a look at the new picture uh, with the new fan mounting and the new uh, secondary. So for me, it's a, a lot more details. Three minute exposure straight out of the camera. As you can see, quite a lot of details. Automatic stretch applied, uh, that's just it. And uh, nice round stars, a lot more details. And uh, no artifacts around the stars. So to me, those two modification has created a better result for me. Don't know if it is the new secondary mirror or the fan mod, possibly both, um, hopefully both, um, but I get a lot of uh, much more detail. So that is my follow up with you on the fan mod, but also the uh, exchange of my secondary mirror. And to all of you out there, happy new year, and uh, hopefully get clear skies for the next year. Take care out there. Bye.